<laughs> well, greetings, Earthlings. We are live, okay? Um, so we are going to go over the defensive players from the Senior Bowl, the risers, the non-risers. Um, just, just for some clarification, us three all attended the Senior Bowl. We went to mm -hmm. all three practices. Actually, all three days, all six practices. And then we mm -hmm. also attended the game and we got a lot of good information. We got to see a lot of things that, you know, the normal public couldn't see because they don't have the TV. They're not there live watching. And so we're going to go over some defensive players that we, that we liked. And so let's, let's get right into it. And we'll, I'll try to look at the chat and see if anyone says anything, but Brosig, give me a defensive lineman that you you really were like, this guy is going to do great in the NFL. Yeah, not only do I think he's going to do great in the NFL, we got to talk to him. We had an interview with him. We'll be posting that here shortly that or we... in the coming days. But Isaiah Foskey, man, um, edge or defensive lineman out of Notre Dame. One, the dude is massive. Like you can just tell that he wants to put you into the ground and then go visit your mom after dinner. Like he's just one of oh. those guys that on the field, he's nasty. He's aggressive at Notre Dame. He had back to back double digit sacks with 11 his uh, in 2021, 11 in 2022, um, 52 total tackles, 45 total tackles in those two years as well. The only thing is, uh, I think. Some GMs and some scouts have them a little bit lower than some of these top tier guys because they don't know if it was just scheme that his production came out of. They don't know if his talent is going to automatically transition right away to the NFL. And he just seems like one of those guys who's going to come in, work, try to prove people wrong and be whatever position and whatever kind of role that the team needs for them to go be successful. So shout out Isaiah. Um, can't wait to see him and see where he goes in the draft. But he was definitely the guy that stood out to me the most. Yeah, I feel like he was a very like put together person. And when we when we showed up that first day, they did uh, some questions with between him and Duggan. And so I think I don't know if there was like team captains at all, but I, I feel he was one of those people that kind of represented the senior bowl. And, mm -hmm. you know, Miles, he talks about captains and leaders on a team. And I feel like he can come in and be that. Another thing that he said in his like press conference or whatever is that he enjoyed doing punt block. I think he even had like to or special teams and he had two punt blocks in, in college or at least his like senior year. And so I, I think that that's, awesome as well he it's it, he doesn't seem a guy that has like an ego or anything like that right he's not a selfish player and that goes to show that he just wants to be on the field he wants to contribute and i think that's where all his production comes from it's just that effort and he has that high motor where he's not going to give up so i think he's going to be a really good fit for a team out there who takes a chance on him exactly um all right miles i know you pride yourself on the trenches you love uh watching these big men play football that's just something you really enjoy <laughs> And so uh, give me give me a player that you had a good time watching. <laughs> okay. All right. There's a lot of ways to introduce me. Um, so I'm also going to do another ramble. If you guys look at our offensive line video that we'll have posted, uh, we did a ramble with that one. Um, I just got to talk about as I'm breaking down the, uh, the, the actual not the actual film that we recorded ourselves looking through that and then also the live play. I'm going to do a little bit of a ramble. Derek Hall out of Auburn popped, popped. No one could stop his stat move. No one could really, uh, his power wash was great initially, but whenever that stopped, whenever his power rush stopped, he immediately just extended his arms and was able to shook, shake whatever defender, or sorry, whatever offensive line was in front of him. Jalen Redman within the Oklahoma guy, within the trenches, I was shocked to see him dominate so well in the um, one-on-ones, the one-on-ones that they had at the, at the Cedar Bowl, along with, they did this another two, they did a two-on-two -two drill between offensive linemen and defensive linemen where they were running stunts. He did very, very well in that one. Zach Pickens, another three tech who was just big, large, gargantuan of a man, stopping everything in his tracks, anything that was happening internally. Um, another guy, and these are guys that just jumped off the screen for me. Um, Iku, or yeah, Iku Leota um, was another guy. <clears throat> Sorry, guys, my throat's super hoarse. Uh, another guy out of Auburn that was able to just 
I don't, I don't know. It, it, it's like he just looked the part. And then I would say Will McDonald out of Iowa State had some really good reps, um, but wasn't as consistently grabbing my attention as I wanted to. 6'4", 236, a little bit undersized. Great bend, though. Whenever he was able to do what he wanted to do, which was an outside rush, being able to bend the corner very well, it was perfection. Anytime he wanted to go inside, it was also great. It was that power rush that was really hurting him. And then now in the – um. Oh, man, this guy, Keon Wright out of Georgia Tech, made money. Keon Wright out of Georgia Tech, I wouldn't be shocked if this guy goes in the second round. Or maybe uh, he won't be in the first, but he had so many things in his package, so many things in his wheelhouse, just be able to physically, physically dominate a lot of these tackles. And the last guy I'll discuss is, you guys know what race this guy is, out of Northwestern, Adi Teoniwa, Adi Bore. So he was another guy out of Northwestern that was just consistently just and that's the thing at D-line. When you're about to play X amount of snaps, I, I, I okay, like I love that you can get the highlight plays from now, time to time. But when you're consistently showing a motor, when you're consistently showing engine that doesn't stop, when you're consistently showing good hand placement, when you're consistently showing power, when you're consistently showing a second move, when you're consistently showing that something that you're great at and not getting embarrassed, not seeing these guys on the floor. I saw Will McDonald on the floor too many times, even in, even though the next snap he would do a crazy spin move and get the get the sack. Why are we on the why are we on the ground um, the play prior? So that's another thing that happened. And then Andrea Carter out of Army. I don't know what. The issue really was, but his realm, like his day one realm that I saw um, was good. You know, he did have a Dewan Jones kind of show him up a little bit, but for his day one, it was good. After that, I didn't see him again, really, honestly. And and that was kind of unfortunate because I think he had first round value. I don't know what a lot of people are going to think about uh, think about him Um after the senior bowl, I think he only has one. He really starts to snap with one with one move, whether it be a, a power play or an inside move. And then after that, if you get stonewalled, there's no second, like, I don't know, whether it be Army, the coaching that he had, but it, it, he just didn't dominate the way he should have. I, I, uh, I was going to say, do you think uh, the whole Army NFL thing is kind of like getting in his head at all? I, I feel like that could um, it, I mean, it's tough. I mean, those army guys are, they're bred kind of different. Um, the reason why I like him so much is because on the fourth, you know, he, he has a mentality just with his, you know, occupation, you know, fourth quarter, he doesn't even care about the score or shouldn't at least, and he's going to go out there and dominate. Um, I think, I think anything that we see that is negative army is the fact that his coach was an, I guess, I guess army staff, like, isn't the staff probably army Based. So, I mean, you're, you're probably limiting the knowledge and the skill set and the things you could kind of gonk, gonk, gonk uphold because these tackles that he was going against, um, and they were they were able to stop his first move, whether it be a power rush or an inside inside threshold. And then after that, they were like expecting a second move and it never came. So, yeah. And he he's a pretty big dude, isn't he? Isn't he like six, seven? Yeah. Is he is he like a true defensive end or or is he like an edge? He's a what do you mean like a stand up edge? Yeah. Or, or is yeah, he like he's kind a, of like he's a, a speed yeah, rusher? he's a three four yeah, he's a three four stand up edge. I mean, he can definitely put his hand in the dirt, but he's gonna have to learn that um, that trait. Yeah. Um. So let's move on to the linebacker position. Uh, we're talking about. I feel linebackers are just a lot different these days than they used to be in the past. I mean, we look at guys maybe like Brian Erlacher, and now we're looking at, you know, Micah Parsons and just, um, I'm, I'm blanking. Uh, yeah, Fred Warner, another guy. I just feel like the, uh, the linebacker play now is just speed and zone and the tackling. They just do absolutely everything. And so I'm excited to see linebackers moving forward in the NFL, just the freak of natures that they are. And so Brosig, who who are some guys that you uh, that you liked in the Senior Bowl? So there are two guys, and I'm kind of going the smaller school theme for both of them. But to your point, I think the reason why these athletic freaks of nature are switching to linebacker or becoming more prevalent because it's a pass first league. And with the pass catching running backs, you have, we talked about Luke Musgrave in our last video, these big, fast tight ends, you got to be able to stay on them. If not, they're going to cook you all day. George Kittle, Travis Kelsey, Mark Andrews, all these guys 
are large and quick and can get open. So you need to be able to balance that with your personnel, getting these speedy linebackers. The first one I wanted to mention, he's kind of more on the edge-ish size, but he he's listed as a linebacker. Isaiah Land out of Florida A&M. Um, small school, only played nine games, but had seven sacks. He also won the best FCS defensive player of the year. And he was... Just one of those guys, super bendy, super explosive, has that high motor. He, he's a little undersized at 6'4", but if you put him in those rush the passer situations, third downs, pin your ears back and go get him, I think he'll be one of those like late round. I think that guy from the Lions who came out of Jackson State, uh, something Houston, was smaller school, but had a lot of production on the defensive line on the other side of Aiden Hutchinson. So I wanted to give him a quick shout out. But whenever we talk about just off the ball, pure linebacker, Dorian Williams out of Tulane, I wasn't mm. paying attention to the linebackers a whole lot. I was more focused on the receivers and some of the other skill playing positions. But this guy was firing out of a cannon, just mm. launching at people. And he wanted to show like, hey, I'm a presence here. You're not going to get past me with just like one dude is not going to just make me miss. And he was just flying left, right during um, those one-on-one -on -one drills where he was keeping up with the running backs, keeping up with the tight ends. So, again, smaller school, but the guy had over 130 tackles last year, wow. five sacks, two interceptions. Like, he's a baller. So, would like to see him start to creep up. I think he's going to get a lot of attention at the Combine, too. Is uh, Tulane the new Georgia or Alabama? Because they're, they're just breeding athletes over there. Miles Apparently. Miles on that? <laughs> My thoughts on that are I'm gonna go to my next guy, but I would I was gonna I was gonna actually harp on Dorian Williams for a little bit. Um, I, yeah, I think he had a great week. I think he made some uh, special teams money. If anything, um, being able to come in maybe a six fifth fifth to sixth round guy definitely mm -hmm. definitely put put himself in a great position. So yeah, um, I, I agree with you on that one. And then the next guy, look. I don't know how to say this guy's first name. Um, maybe that's something I could definitely get better at. Uh, is like these guys' names, Sir Servosia Dennis. Servosia Dennis. I'm just gonna say it's that out of Pitt. Now, once again, as I'm, you know, we're editing these clips, and I'm I'm looking at, you know, looking at a play from start to finish. That's kind of what you have to do while you're editing. You just might as well gaze into what you're watching. This guy is gonna be good i hate doing this actually i'm not gonna say that i'm not gonna say that throw it out the window but i think he had a great cedar bowl when he was doing any individual any individual team stuff um with all the linebackers he was always the first one um the his his hands like his ability to catch even though that's like a minuscule part of of linebacker but when we talk about the fred warners when we talk about these other smaller agile uh guys like they got to be able to catch the ball got to be able to just flew it in the sips at six one about 220 something um he's right in that will have so being like a fred warner look like um don't remember seeing him a lot in the run game, but if we, like we said, that can always be developed. Can you stop the pass? That's what these linebackers are getting paid to do today. Can you stop that tight end like Alex mentioned? So I think Cerveca Sir, Dennis out of Pitt was a linebacker and D. Winters out of TCU. He was one that was when those team periods, who we also interviewed for him, um, through those team periods, he was getting his nose into all of those gunk drops Pile, piles of of dudes pause what? um yeah <laughs> but uh no another very very athletically gifted um just just physical presence yeah um so let's move on to a very fun position you know we see a guy last year like Tariq Woolen, who, you know, just caused a scene in the NFL, just playing incredible football. And so this year, we're, we got to try to find that kind of guy moving forward. And so, Brosig, which cornerback stood, uh, stood out to you? I know, you know, there was a lot of seven on seven. There's a lot of man on man. And you were, you were right in the corner watching all that going on. So what did you like from a, from a secondary standpoint? 
all three days that I was at the Senior Bowl, I was watching mm -hmm. wide receiver DB matchups. I watched every single snap that they had. So I fell in love with a bunch of these guys, and maybe it's because I paid most attention. But I just think the wide receiver class and the corner class this year is super deep, and you're going to have a lot of value in day two and day three. This first guy, I'm only going to touch on just in case Miles wants to dive on in a little bit too. We got a little bit of a man crush on Julius Brents because this dude, you just see him walk on the field and you see all six, four of him, 200 and something pounds. The guy's just massive. All these corners were super long bodied corners. And you see that in Tariq Woolen. You see that in Salsa Gardner, Richard Sherman, some of these dominant corners to come out into the league. They were just big body guys. And he fit that stature really well. He had a little bit of a rough beginning, went to Iowa, finishes at K-State, um, Kansas State, had four picks, 45 single tackles, um, a couple of pass deflections, just a big guy, quick. I think he's going to continue to impress throughout the combine. But the dude that I really wanted to harp on was Kai Blue Kelly. Again, cool ass name. I just like the name. But corner out of Stanford, 148 tackles, three picks lengthy really great press corner skills um if you go watch his tape against drake london a couple years ago usc versus stanford had a phenomenal game and you know how big six five drake london was making people look silly out there and he was able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him so again he'll be a later mid-round pick but he was glued to people whether it was one-on-one -on -one, seven on seven eleven on eleven and he was getting up there i can tell this guy doesn't shy away from tackling so I think those are some traits and attributes that these GMs and scouts really want to see. And I think he's going to be really, really good. Miles, who you got? So how to, you know, harping on what Brosik said, I was in the trenches for most of the week. He was in the secondary for the most of the week. So I'm going to go with what Xavier Hutchinson has said, and along with another receiver who's like, it's escaping my mind. This Tariq Stevenson guy out of Miami. Also I so need, good. I so need good. to tap in. Um, I know a lot of people in the comments, they say, go over him, go over him. Now, he did have a pick six during team, I believe, um, their last day. And it's – it's. I'm just going to listen to the receivers. These The actual receivers talking about who do you respect, who's the guy that gave you a lot of – not a lot of fits, but good challenge um, the, the first two days. And I heard out of – I heard about Xavier Hutchinson's mouth, like, T, you know, Tariq Stevens is the guy. You know, he's someone that – they they had really good reps, so he's a guy that I I, I want you all to tap in. Um, but I mean, like Brosick said, just set it up very perfectly for me. Julius Brins at a K State. What are we talking about? Tariq Woolen being a fifth round draft pick, and now also like a defensive player or de rookie defensive player of the year candidate. Um, did a lot of great things, a lot of good things for the Seahawks. And I mean, that's where, that's where you want to go, right? That's if a six, four guy has speed and length. And the good thing about Julius and that the, another thing that we were able to do was kind of, you know, extract some knowledge from his brain was at Iowa, he played off man. So giving some space, I asked him, you know, what does that do for you? I'm able to look at the quarterback. I'm able to play more of a freestylistic game. I'm let a, I'm able to look at the game and then make my adjustments while I'm still in man when I'm playing off. Go to Kansas State for the next two years. He's a lot, a lot of man press. I said, what are the pros of that? I'm only focused on this guy. This guy has all my attention. I made a am able to mirror my body perfectly just for him. If I don't even have to play the ball, I could play him because I'm six four and I got speed and good hips. So being able to see him understanding that he went to two programs and and worked in two different types of man fronts, like or man styles. At 6'4", great speed, good feet. There's a highlight reel zone out there when he was doing one-on-ones and, and doing really well. So Julius Prince, of course, is my man crush for the weekend. What uh, What is he currently projected in, in the draft? Do we know? I mean, I mean, you could probably say he's a corner, so he's valuable. He's 6'4", had a good Cedar Bowl. Tariq Woolen is, you know, a lot of people in the NFL, they need to find the next this and he's 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 gonna be that Tariq Woolen uh, look like I'd say day f not day four, um, third round, third round 
maybe fourth is the lowest. But if he gets picked up in the second round, I would I would I would not be shocked at all. Yeah, at the all. PFF has him at one seventy one right now, and again, I'm just yeah. using that as a reference. But mm -hmm. again, we talked about how these guys are going to start rising in the combine. Whenever they see his size and his speed, he goes through those meetings and interviews to show his intelligence to pair with that. Which I he think has. he's also going to start creeping. He he was also um, all Big 12 second academic team, I believe. And so he, he he's he learned two playbooks. He won mm -hmm. the Big 12. Um, he learned two styles of playing man. Like, if, if we're not talking Julius Brintz, like, I don't know what we're talking about, but, yeah. <laughs> Especially a team like Kansas State, who definitely played super well this year. I mean, they were a team that ended up actually winning the Big 12 and, you know, had a pretty dominant defense. And so a guy like that, who's almost like representing Kansas State coming into the draft, I feel like that's a, also another positive to look at. And, mm. you know, the Big 12 is kind of known for – their offensive firepower for the most part. And so getting a corner like that is, is pretty good, especially at that size. Um, so now we can look at the last position group. We're going to look at the safeties, free safety, strong safeties. I know there's definitely a guy that Miles is going to want to talk about. Uh, Brosig, who do you have uh, as a riser for the safety position? I know he was already pretty high up there, not like super high, but I'm going to say like late second, early third round pick. And he's just slowly becoming my favorite safety in this draft. I've always really loved Jordan Battle. I wish he would have came out last year because I thought that he was putting on great tape. But this kid at FSU, Jamie Robinson, has been just balling. And if you think about these one-on-one -on -one drills that you see on Twitter that people are getting cooked, it's not just corners. They're throwing you know huge safeties out there who are used to playing zone coverage to just try to stay with these quick, shifty receivers. And Jamie Robinson was one of the few guys that I saw out there from the safety position who was just on top of people. And he was letting them know about it, too. You would see him swat a ball or like hit someone. And he was just like, yeah, come over the middle again. <laughs> or like, you can't you can't hang with me. He was just chirping, which I love it. You love the competitiveness. That's what they're out there to do. Show their personality, show their leadership. He reminds me of like Honey Badger. Honey Badger is a little bit shorter than him, actually, but just being versatile to play outside could probably play um, slot or at the nickel position as well. He got really low to the ground, just had a really good form, good hips, was just glued to people. And I think, again, he's one of those guys who's going to start rising. But his junior year, four picks. His senior year, got a pick, had a sack, um, 99 solo tackles or um, total tackles. So, yeah, he can just do it all. And I think he's one of those safeties that could fit in a lot of different schemes. So excited to see him too. Yeah. Uh, Miles, uh, I, I know who you're going to talk about and let, let the people know what, what you think about this guy. Okay. So there's, there's three guys. There's actually oh, three, three or four guys. I might, I might skim Babylon. over real quick. Like Brosick said, this senior bowl wasn't a great, it's not to, I don't, I don't really know. I think it's more for when you talk safety, it's for movement, fluidity, um, and probably interviewing, getting to know the player. If you want to, you, the, the safety position for one-on-ones, it's like, what do we like? It's, it, it doesn't show you really anything because how often is a safety going to be man pressed or, or on a shifty guy? More than likely it's going to be a big body guy. Um, or if he's doing some type of man, he's going to have help with linebackers, chaos inside. So, or be it's, like it's on a, a tight end or a receiver. Like yeah. that's right. what they're manning up against, you know, not, um, you know, Tank AJ. Dell. Dell. He's yeah. not going to Tank Dell. Yeah. So, um, so there's a few guys who, when I saw within the, the team portions or um, things like that, that really caught my eye. Um, the, the, the twin brother of Chase Brown, Cine Brown, who is. Oh, yeah. He had a great big. Week. Thick and 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 we actually had an interview with him. He, he seems kind of almost bigger out of his pads. It's weird when you see guys like that, but always around the ball, um, uh, consistently. Anytime there's an opportunity to do a little bit of a pop, um, he does it. Unfortunately, he actually was on the tail end of a wall a pop. He probably shouldn't have participated in with the tight end going full speed. He was going half, um, got popped. But um, I think he had a great. Great week with Sidney Brown. DeMarco Helms is a guy that probably couldn't 
shine as best as he could did have interceptions within the one-on-ones but um he's a sure tackler he's a guy that travels from uh hash mark to hash mark to get a, a sure tackle check on that texas game if you don't know what i'm talking about very much always given uh the run game fits so not just in the passing game but in the run game as well so but um alex the guy that probably he's uh harping on is this jl skinner six four safety out of uh boise state if a lot of you guys remember george iloka also out of boise state the Bengals picked him up uh i believe in the second or third round um he was pretty big too wasn't he he was he was also about six four so um jl skinner um, I would just like that I could see his his size in person. He's all of six four. Um, okay. and then uh, 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 like I said, and for a guy like him, you gotta understand he, strong safety, Cam Chancellor vibes. They're not gonna let him hit people at the senior bowl. They're not gonna let him do what he does best at the senior bowl. He would be he would be he would he would make a lot of money. But he would take a lot of money from other players as well if they were like, if they said, "Hey, JL, go do JL things." <laughs> um, but but like I said, you're gonna have to for these safeties. You're really gonna have to put on the film to see how they fit in the run game because safety is an easy position. You stay in the back, don't get beat. I, I mean, look, you have your half, your third safety is not a complicated position. Um, that's why a lot of times they can do free stuff where everyone's manned up and they get to play free or there's two half zones that they can play free because it's, it is a position where you can kind of do whatever you want low key, but um, it's, it's senior bowl. Isn't a really a great showcase to, to shine on the seat, shine on the safeties. But like I said, um, for these safeties, you're going to have to turn on the tape. And I, I would suggest you guys tap in a, I got to tap into Sydney Brown's film. That I haven't out of Illinois because I'm already I'm already I have a crush on Devin Witherspoon who did not show up to the Senior Bowl. That's a little bit of something that we should probably discuss. You know, we knock Will Levis, you know, for not showing up. Does Devin Witherspoon have an issue with? Because he's he's getting top ten. I mean, Brosick, you put him at to the Raiders in our mock draft last night. So um, does he not go to the Senior Bowl because he's good, or does he not go to the Senior Bowl because he doesn't want to get exposed? Um, mm-hmm. So that's that's a whole thing within itself. Um, but yeah, you know, um, I think the safeties played great. I, I feel like Weatherspoon has kind of already proven himself when it when it comes to quarterbacks. I, I see it a little bit different in the sense that especially that they're not going to get hit or anything like that. Like they're not going to get injured at practice. And so Levis, a guy that didn't really prove a lot in college, didn't really have the stats. You would have liked to see a guy like that out there. Witherspoon, on the other hand, I feel like he kind of proved it or like made his mark in college. And so I think he already knows that he's going to be in the first round. Um, But uh, I've asked this question a lot, but Skinner, a guy that you know as as a casual person that doesn't know a lot about the draft i'm walking around when people are doing interviews you know you glance at this guy he almost looks like he's supposed to be in the nba you know what i mean like he he's just a giant and so the fact he looks bigger than six four honestly and even when you're up in the stands like i was filming at the top all the way and you could tell that he was a lot bigger than people and that that's crazy because you're almost looking at him as like ants at that point. And so what what slot or what, you know, round do you see Skinner, both of y'all see Skinner being drafted? Oh man. I'm not sure. I mean, he's a he's an incredible scheme. What fit. A, what does a PFF have him? I'm looking right he's, now and oh. he's gotta be a I second don't... rounder, right? Unless I'm unless they have him under corner. No, no, they'll they're they're probably not going to give him his due respect, dude. Like, uh, he had a. I think from what I saw on his, um, what game was it? He's not even on here. Miles, you did you did a uh, film study on him, right? No, not yet. Okay. I just watched him. Um, uh, his game. It's a. It's a. It's a. It's a Tampa two. It's a zone. Like you got to play a lot of zone. You don't want him in man too much. He's got to be able to – his gift is getting into the run game and getting the bar jarred loose anytime. He's going to be there. He's going to be there at the at the point of contact with the receivers. He's he's a scheme fit. You don't want him playing free by himself. He's not free. He's a strong safety. Um, you want him to possibly be in the box, but 
we don't know what his block sheds like. You know, they play 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 different style at Boise State, so he's a scheme fit. Um, I think the combine on on what he exactly runs and how he runs that's going to be um, the thing that really pushes him probably into day two, third round maybe, or, or early early day three. But his when you talk about you know trying to find a camp chancellor or or just getting a big safety that can take away tight ends, you want to take a flyer on him. You you just you just have to because he is athletically gifted and um, has a basketball background, basketball family at least. And so um, yeah, um, I think you take a flyer on him. You can't teach that athleticism. You can't teach that height at that position. And one of these conferences who are, are always dealing with these big body tight ends, they're going to try to want someone or target someone like that in the draft, whether it maybe it's in the fifth round or the sixth round, one of those dart throws. All right, we have a big guy, athletic. We have the coaching staff around him that can you know put him in the right position to just use his height and use that freakish athleticism to make a play. And I think that's where a lot of GMs and and scouts are going to be looking at is um, what can this guy be? What can we turn him into? And would he fit in our scheme to be able to become the best that he can be? So I want I'm excited to see Miles' film study on him because I want to see how he does handle all those different scenarios that Miles just mentioned. Yeah, that, that's got to be uh, next on the list for Miles for sure. I get I get, we have we have a little extra time now. Uh, I'll ask one last question to y'all because Miles had brought it up a little bit, but I, I, I'm going to ask an overall question with the draft. Like how important is scheme fit? Because I know when we talk about defenses, you know, there are teams out there. Personally, I don't know a lot when it comes to like who runs a three, four, who runs a four, three, you know, et cetera, all that kind of stuff. So like when it comes to the draft, maybe if both of y'all want to kind of chime in a little bit when it comes to, you know, what kind of teams are looking for what kind of players potentially? Um, a scheme is everything. I think you scheme scheme is very, very important. Um, you know, if you see a guy that, you know, like Devin Witherspoon having a crazy good man press game, a team that plays a lot of zone may not see the exact value in him. That's why there was such a big debate with Sauce Gardner and then also my man, uh, Devin Singletary on who goes first. Devin Singletary, not Devin Singletary. Gosh, uh, help me like, out. Damn, he went pretty. Uh, uh, the um, LSU, Stingley, Derek Stingley. Der- Derek, Derek Stingley. Stingley. Yeah, yeah. Gosh, not Singletary. Derek Stingley and uh, Sauce Garner. What did Derek Stingley do a little bit more? Having a man press background at LSU in the SEC. That's a little bit valued a little bit more. And then what do y'all do? Y'all do zone, right? Most yeah, it's jets. cover three. So Sauce had he was really good at both, but he was really, really excellent in zone as well. And since that's yeah. what we ran, the Jets, Robert Sala, a lot of cover three zones. So that scheme did play a part in there. And also Stingley was off the board, but <laughs> still. Right. But yeah, scheme's important for defense. Yeah. I, I, I saw a little redraft thing and it, it had Sauce as the number one pick, which is pretty wild being a defensive back. And, Don't talk about that, please. Oh, man. That was such a terrible redraft whole thing. <laughs> that was so bad. The one the NFL sent? You're talking about that one? I, I think so, or ESPN. And Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy. Oh, to yeah. The Jets. Brock Purdy, number four. Yeah. We that. can't we can't talk about that. Sorry, That's wild. Viewers. That is we can't wild. Talk about that. <laughs> I, I did see that one. I forgot. <laughs> oh man. Uh Brosig, yeah. What what do you got when it comes to scheme? I got and another thing too, I mean, Miles kind of touched on it a little bit when it comes to zone and man. Are there certain teams that you know, run more man or zone on the defensive side of the football? Yeah, because you think about these coaching trees, it's the same for the defensive side of the balls. Like a lot of Kyle Shanahan's defensive-minded coordinators run that cover three that I think stemmed from Pete Carroll, like the, the, the scheme that they like to run. But it's the same thing on the offensive side of the ball too. And the New England Patriots are notorious for this shit. Um, you see Cole Strange go in the first round from Chattanooga, wherever the hell he came from, not because he like was blowing everyone out of the water, like everyone's minds in the scouting department. It was the Patriots have a very particular kind of person at wide receiver. They're usually short and white. I don't get it. I don't know. But those are the schemes and the types of players that have the skill set that's going to make their offense run the best that they can. For again the Jets because I know them the best, 
we really value bigger receivers like Denzel Mims, who we haven't cut yet because of their run blocking. Why? Because we run the ball a whole bunch. Um, Until uh, you get zone Rogers. running schemes. If we try to, if Brees could just, you know, stay healthy, but offensive linemen that are more agile, quick, if they're going to be pulling, if they're going to be hitting guys and going to get to the linebackers and the safeties. So scheme is, I think, very important, unless maybe the only scenario I can think of, if you have an offensive minded head coach who maybe doesn't have the staff to fill a defensive minded coordinator who has complicated schemes like Bill Belichick. It could be a very simple base three, four kind of defense where because it's simple scheme doesn't matter as much. You just want athletes who can do what they do naturally. So I think that's the only time when maybe scheme might not be as important. Awesome. Um, all right, guys, we are going to be closing out here. Um, just want to let y'all know we got a lot of videos coming out for the senior bowl. Still, we have them in the, in the drafts. We already have like 17 videos out, which is wild. Once again, we went all three days of practices. Um, we went to the Senior Bowl game, and we are trying to be as knowledgeable as possible coming up to the draft. The draft is going to be in you know two and a half months, so hopefully we're going to be doing mock draft Mondays moving forward. Hopefully we can make that a thing. Another thing I want to kind of touch into as well is maybe just going through every team and doing a one through seven type thing. I feel like people would like that. And so, yeah, we'll, we'll be creative and, you know, we're, we're just doing our due diligence when it comes to the draft. So peace out. We will see y'all and uh, like, and subscribe and all, all the good stuff. See y'all later.